Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous quilt behind me which is made using a jelly roll and the block is called Pandora's Box. So for this project you're going to need a jelly roll, you're going to need a cutting mat, you're going to need a rotary cutter, a ruler, some pins, a small pair of scissors for your threads, a sewing machine with a neutral thread and a quarter inch foot for piecing. You'll also need a walking foot for quilting. In addition to that, you're going to need an iron and an ironing mat. So let's get started. So we're going to take two strips from our jelly roll and I'm going to choose two contrasting strips. So I'm going to have one here that's got a greeny colour and a red colour. So I'm just going to pop that away. So I've got two contrasting strips here. So I've got the green and the red. And what you do is you join these two strips together using a quarter inch seam right sides together. So that will give you something that looks like this. And then you're going to cut it at two and a half inches. So we're going to cut two and a half inches off our strips that are joined together. And I'm just lining up the ruler along the seam, measuring two and a half inches. And I'm going to cut that and I'm going to do that twice. And then you're going to join these together, opposites to opposites like that. So you've got your red going diagonally and then you've got your black going diagonally. And you've got, I've already pressed this one so you can see that our seams are going opposite ways. And then I'm just going to butt those two up like this and pop a pin in. And then I'm going to machine those together. So I'm just going to join these together using a quarter of an inch seam. And what I would do is I would have all my pieces cut for however many blocks I wanted to make my quilt. I would have all my little pieces cut and I would sit and I would chain piece them all till I had all of the pieces that I needed that looked like this. But for the purposes of today, I'm just going to do one block. So I'm now going to go to the iron and I'm going to press that back. So I'm going to set the seam. And then I'm going to press it back. So I've got nice flat seams. And that's the centre of our box. So now I'm going to put some edges on because what I want is I want it to look like this. So I've already cut out these pieces and so I have cut two pieces which measure four and a half inches. Let me just double check this. Yeah, four and a half inches and two pieces at eight and a half. Now, because this has got writing on, so it's directional fabric, it's a bit tricky because your blocks are all gonna go in different places. So what I tend to do when it's something like that is I join it so the writing goes like this at the bottom of the other pieces of my block. So I would have it like that rather than have one piece upside down. But that's personal preference. It's whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to join these two pieces first of all to our little block. So I'm going back over to the machine to join those. So 
So I've joined those two to either side of the box. Now, ordinarily, I would go and press those, but for the purposes of today, I'm just going to finger press them so I can join the other two pieces on. So I'm just giving them a press with my fingers, and then I'm going to join the two side pieces. So I'm going to join the two side pieces. And as I said, I'm going to have all my writing coming down towards the blocks. So I'm just going to put these two sides on. So now I'm going to show you how we lay the blocks out because that is our block once we've framed it. So if I show you, so you lay one that way and then the next one you're going to lay with your seam. So even though it's the same block, you've got your seam going along here horizontally. And what I don't want is too many seams. So if I lay the next one like that, you can see that you've got this join here. So if you turn it, so you've got the longest side of the piece that you've got here. So you've got the longest border that side and then the longest border that side. And then our next one will go here like this. And then our next one, the longest border will come down like that. So that's how you lay it out. So you haven't got too many seams all joining up on your block. So now we're gonna go over and look at the quilt behind me and we're going to talk about that quilt. So this quilt was made by Jan, who's one of our in-house tutors here. And this one measures approximately 47 by 57. So this isn't a complete jelly roll. If you were to use a complete jelly roll, you would be looking at about 65 by 72. So you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. So this one has five of our blocks going across and six of them going down. And what I like about this, so Jan's put a black border on to frame her blocks. And then she's joined up all these little two and a half inch squares to make another border. And then she's put the black binding on it, which is the same as this border. And I love the way this one has been quilted. So she's done a really fancy decorative stitch in the center of the box. And then she's done this lovely wavy line, but she's done it twice around these other blocks. And then she's also done the wavy line down the black border and she's used a variegated thread. So you can see it's in red and then it disappears because it's darker. And she's done the same in this border as well. So I love the fact that we've got this sort of red and gray black variegated thread because it appears and then it disappears. And I think that's a really great example of what you can do using a jelly roll. So it doesn't have to be a Christmas quilt, it can be anything at all. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my favorite ones that hangs here in the shop. So as always, make it your own, have fun, and I look forward to seeing you here in the sewing studio the next time.